past here, I think it's helpful to refer back to the to the beginning, to the title page and the, the outline of this to look at where we are and what we've done. Uh, what's in yellow here, all the solving equations stuff. We had to take a break to learn something about logarithms in between the solving equations thing. And actually what's in green is sort of related to change of base yeah, you can use in solving equations. Then we shifted gears and looked at graphing the two types of functions, exponential and logarithmic. And then we moved into looking at applied problems, real world problems. And then so today we're going to look at applications of logarithmic functions. Right? What we've done so far is look at applications of exponential functions, but not of logarithmic functions. Logarithmic scales is uh, what this is called, and you'll see why in a second here. Um, the first one that people uh, would point out, the kind of most obvious example of a log logarithmic scale is the Richter scale. Earthquakes, there's three different examples of logarithmic scales we're going to look at in here, modeling logarithmic with logarithmic functions. Uh, the logarithmic scale, or the Richter scale, is uh, how they say how powerful an earthquake is. It is actually, uh, I mean, you probably use the numbers, and you probably heard things, well, this earthquake uh, that, you know, caused all kinds of destruction and damage that might be in the 8 or even pretty rare in the 9 uh, range. But we have ones that are two and three all the time, and you don't even necessarily feel them. How is it possible that an earthquake of magnitude, say, four, does nothing? An earthquake of magnitude eight does um, that much destruction? It seems like, well, if it's four and eight, shouldn't this be like half as destructive, right? If if this caused a billion dollars worth of damage, shouldn't this cause half a billion dollars worth of damage? Because a lot of things uh, work that way, right? Um, you're, this is not a linear scale, and so you can't think of it as a linear scale. Most scales that you work with are linear. Let's let's think of some familiar ones like your uh, your grade scale. Your grade scale is sort of linear because the gap in between all the letter grades isn't always the same. Uh, you know, 50% is C minus. The next uh, thing up here is 60%. It doesn't go every 10, so it's not really a linear scale, but um, C plus, 67, and so on here, right? 73 is a B. But the idea is you can use a linear scale when you're comparing numbers that are all in the same magnitude. These are all in the tens, right? If you were comparing, uh, let's say we were comparing, maybe a better example would be, uh, let's say that... a uh, sports team was doing a fundraiser, some minor league hockey team or something like that. Let's say they're doing a fundraiser, and you're looking at how much money each of the players on the team raised. So let's say one player raised $125, and another player raised $300, and one player raised $100. All of those are in the same magnitude. If you were to put it on a scale, okay, a scale where that's higher, that's, that's more, um, I'm going to move this over so we have more space here. If you're going to put this on a scale, like a graphic of it, if this is zero and we got to go up to there, uh, if we say 400 is here and then we're going to divide it up so that our scale set up nicely, if we're going to put the other people on that scale, think about where they go. This person right here, uh, you can see them there right there. There's 100. And this person is right here somewhere, 125. You could give each of these a name, right? Like you could say this is level one of fundraising, this is level two, this is level three, and this is level four, if you wanted to call it that, or you could call it A, B, C, D, or whatever. If you're setting up a linear scale, a jump on the scale is corresponds to just, like if you, uh, if you go from one to two, it corresponds to doubling it, right? This is $100, this is $200. If you go from 2 to 3, that's the same as going from 1 to 2. It represents the same change. And then the person who's 300 is up here. You can see where all of those are. All of these numbers are in the same magnitude. They're all in the hundreds. You can use a linear scale as, is good for comparing numbers that are all in the same magnitude. But let's just change this slightly and say, okay, we're doing our little fundraising graph here again. Get rid of those people. Let's say person number one again did $100 and person number two did $125. 
let's say person number three did ten thousand dollars and let's say person number four did one million dollars and let's say this person down here person number five did one cent okay they're really bringing it in one cent number one we can't have 400 as the top of our scale we need a bigger number what do we need well we yeah we need at least a million if we say that's zero and this is a million Okay, one million here. So this person is up here, right? There's the person who's a million. Where where does everybody else go here? Where's the person who's one cent going to be? Are you going to be able to tell that they're above the line at the bottom? No, right? What about the person who's $100? Still, you're not going to be able to tell. Either one of these is totally insignificant compared to a million, right? You, if you if this was a on your graphing calculator screen, you made the top of the screen a million and the bottom zero, any one of these numbers wouldn't even register. Like it would still look like it's on that bottom pixel. All of the all of those would be down here. That's not a very useful comparison. So what you can do, and this is what this this is, because and an earthquake of magnitude 4 is nothing compared to an earthquake of magnitude 8 because it's actually, these are the exponents. These are what powers of 10, the actual amount of energy is. The number on here is the logarithm or the exponent on the amount of energy. These are the logarithms. That's why it's called the logarithmic scale. These are the logs of the actual amount of energy released. We're not going to get into the specifics of, you know, what units all of that is, but we're just looking at the comparison and how a logarithmic scale works. If you were setting up a logarithmic scale for this fundraising, what you would say is this graph is this is kind of not very useful for comparing it. So instead, we're going to take the logarithm of each of those. What would the logarithm of that be? Six, right? That would be six on the scale. So we could say here's six up here. There's that person. What would this one be? Four, right? Now, so they would actually be here as four, roughly, right? If we if we kind of divided it up somewhat, it's sort of equal. It's not really, but uh, what would this one be? Two point something, right? Two point whatever. I don't know. Make it up. Two point one or two or something like that. What would this one be? Let's do the easier ones. That would be two. Here's here's two, right? What would this one be? It would be negative, right? It would be actually down here. Negative 1, negative 2. A logarithmic scale is one where you're comparing the exponents. So you'd have one person here, one person here, one person there, and then the other person's down here at negative 2. <coughs> and then somebody would be slightly above that too, the $125 person. You have to realize, though, that a jump of 1 on here, going from a 3 to a 4, doesn't represent just adding on a bit more, right? It doesn't mean like, well, this person raised $3 and this person raised $4, so it's only a little bit more. What does it represent when you go for a jump of one unit on our scale? Multiplying by 10, right? It's 10 times more. This this 4 represents 10,000. This would represent 100,000. It's a way to compare things that are all vastly different magnitudes. So going from a magnitude 7 to a magnitude 8, it, it would take... 10 of these all happening together to be the same amount of energy as this, right? Just like it would take 10 people here raising $10,000 to get to this level. It's not a linear scale. You can't think of it and say, well, if I have two of these, it adds up to one of these, right? It doesn't work that way because it's not linear, all right? This, the number on the scale is the logarithm. It's the exponent. So if you have... If you have this, a magnitude 8 is 10 times as intense as a magnitude 7. A magnitude 7 is 10 to the 4th or 10,000, right? 10,000 times as much as a magnitude 3. You can do it this way, 10 to the 7 minus 3. Those are the exponents. 
Or what you could do is you could say, like for this, you could either say 10 to the 7 minus 3 or 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the 3. That gives you 10,000, right? It's 10,000 times as much. Remember your exponent rules. Those are equivalent, right? 10 to the 7 minus 3 is the same as 10 to the 7th divided by 10 to the 3. Even if the numbers aren't so nice here, 4.8 and 6.8, this, this is one one hundredth because the difference between those is two, right? 10 to the 4.8 minus 6.8. 10 to the negative 2, 1 over 10 to the 2, 1 over 100, right? All those exponent laws have to come back to you here. Everyone's in a different spot in terms of how comfortable they are working with those with exponents. I'm not going to fill in every box for you. You can fill in some of them as you work through this. But the key to understand is you're not looking at the actual numbers. You're looking at the logarithms of the numbers, the exponents. All right. Now, I do want to give you a hint, but not. I don't want to actually do these questions for you. Just like this expression we had up here, if you, if you want the ratio, let's, let's uh, take this and move it down below here so I can write some more. Basically, you can write the thing two ways here. You can write it with division or with subtraction of exponents because those are equal. The ratio of how intense things are is equal to that or it's equal to this, either way, right? Whichever way you are more comfortable with. So I'm instead of putting 7 and 3 here, I'm going to say magnitude 1 and magnitude 2. Or I guess you could put it that way, magnitude 2 minus magnitude 1. That's the, but you got to have the 10 to the power of here. Notice it's not just this. Like a linear scale would be that. If you want to know the difference, you just subtract the two things. If somebody raised $300 and somebody else raised $50, if it's a linear scale, which that would be, somebody, you just subtract them. If, if we're using that uh, logarithmic scale, someone is at level 4 of fundraising and someone is at level 3 of fundraising, you have to subtract them as the exponents. Or you have to divide the actual numbers. So this has to be here, 10 to the power of. This, If you like sort of formulas, that's a formula you can use for logarithmic scales, where M1 and M2 can be just whatever scale you happen to be working with, whether it's the earthquake scale or the loudness scale or uh, pH or anything, right? This is sort of a formula you can use. And you can kind of fill it in. You have three variables, the ratio and each of those things. So if you want to know the ratio, how many times more intense, this is what you're looking for. You can just fill in the other things, right? You can say ratio is... Well, you do need to do 8.1 minus 6.9. you got to use the actual... Don't round them off because it's going to be quite a bit of difference. This is actually 10 to the, what would this be? It can be a number that's not, it could be a number that's not a whole number, right? 10 to the 1.2. Or in other words, I think this comes out to roughly 16, 15 point something. 16 times more intense. You know it's going to be more than 10 times more intense but less than 100 times more intense by looking at the number. Because if the difference here was 1, it would be 10 times more intense. If the difference here was 2, it would be 100 times more intense. Does that make sense? Now, somebody might trick you by, not trick you, but give you something more difficult. This one is more difficult because... You're not missing the ratio. You're given the ratio, but what are you missing? Yeah, one of these magnitudes. You can set this up the same way. Just make it the variable. Make one of these the variable. I would prefer it if you work through this than me. The, I don't want it to be a recipe approach of, oh, here's how you do this kind of question. But that's a hint, okay? So that's earthquake scale and an introduction to to this. We're going to look at the next